Hi everyone, thank you very much for picking the time to attend this webinar. This is Efthivolos Grigoriou, Head of Global Research and Analysis here at JFD Brokers. Uh, but before we dive in, please read through the risk disclaimer that is being shown on the screen. Now, in this webinar, we are going to discuss why to have a trading strategy. We're going to go over the advantages and I will talk a bit about the essentials of a trading plan. We will touch a bit on a risk management and money management and then we're going to go through an example using one of my trading strategies. Now, why have a trading strategy? First and foremost, it helps you monitor your trades, which of course makes life much easier. Because if you just look at a given chart and say, okay, well, I'm going to trade this, and then you look on another chart and say, I'm going to trade that, if there is no system behind it, if you don't have a plan, it becomes that much more difficult to find opportunities it becomes that much more difficult to actually respond to market conditions once you have the trade on. But once you have a set of rules saying, I get in when this happens, I get out when that happens, responding to how your open trades is behaving, it becomes that much easier because you already know the parameters that you have set out. It obviously will introduce consistency which makes developing a successful approach that much easier because it allows you to change some of your steps in your strategy until you get something that works for you and if you have that consistency that is of course much easier than if you're doing something completely different every single time at the same time it helps you to spot opportunities because if you already know systematically what you are looking for whatever that is, short term, long term, technical, non technical, you are able to filter through the markets that much easier. But most importantly, I think it helps you to know when not to trade. Something I say to people all the time is it is much better not to make 200 pips than it is to lose 50. A missed opportunity is no money lost. And it's very, very important to know when not to trade. So if you have a strategy, if you have a system, if you have a plan that tells you trade under these conditions, if those conditions are not met, you don't trade. Now, we're going to go through the essentials of a trading strategy. First and foremost, obviously, you have to develop a directional bias. This is very important as this is the first step. You have to decide if you think something is going up or if you think something is going down. And obviously, you have to qualify your entry there by deciding. Do you think something is going down now? So should you get in in this price? Or do you think it's going down next week? So should you wait? Then you have to determine your stop loss and target. Before you ever place a trade, you should know what the target and the stop for the trade is going to be because that is going to be absolutely critical to establishing whether the trade makes sense or not from a risk to reward perspective, which oftentimes is a lot more important than the actual trade setup itself. There are many, many times, for example, that I get a setup that looks compelling technically or fundamentally, but I pass because the risk reward does not make sense. It's very important to remember that we want to place our stop at a logical level. That, that means a level that will tell us that our trade signal is no longer valid. But try to not stress this uh, and always make sure to give the market enough room to breathe, okay? And finally, is to define your time frame. Now, 
If you, for example, use an hourly chart to develop your position and to develop your idea and you get into the position and we are on day four and you're still holding it, chances are if you receive that signal from an hourly bars, that signal may no longer be valid, even more, even more so if it, was, if, if it was even shorter term chart, let's say you spotted an opportunity on a 30 minute chart and there you are four days later, chances are the market is in a completely different place then. So it's very important to define how long you will going to give this trade to work or not and say to yourself, okay, well, if it's, if it's an hourly chart, I'm expecting something to play out in a day, day and a half. If nothing is happening, maybe I should take that off. Try to think of it as a stop in terms of time, as opposed in terms of price. Now, in determining your strategy, it's absolutely critical to understand your own personality. But your personality is going to be intimately tied to your strategy because one person is going to be more successful as an active trader and other person is going to be a lot more successful as a position trader. And both can be equally successful and one does not negate the other. For example, my colleague Varvara, which is a short term trader, she may think that euro dollar is going up and I may think it's going down. We can both be right depending on how long of a time frame we're talking about. If she thinks that it's going up in the next two days and I think it's going down in the next six months, what she's saying does not necessarily negate of what I'm saying and so ever. Knowing what kind of strategy is going to work best with your personality, are you more of a swing trader or are you more of an active trader? is going to be very important which will have a significant impact on your trading life and of course in your trading decisions. Next, so if you are an active trader you might look something like this when you see a range on a 15 minute chart. You look at the top of that range and maybe look to either buy or sell at those boundaries or play the range, sell on the top buy on the bottom or to look for a breakout, so to look for the price to clear that particular range. Now if you are a swing trader, so you are less active, you might look at the daily chart, something like this, and you might say, okay, well, we are in a downtrend, therefore sell on the top, cover there, sell there and cover there, and that might take you several days might take you a week or so and maybe that's what you're comfortable with. Or you may be like me, a position trader or also known as a trend trader and you trade extremely medium to long term and you look something like this, uh, which is a weekly chart and say, okay, well, this looks like a symmetrical triangle. Looks like the momentum behind the sell-off is starting to narrow. Maybe there is a breakout here and Maybe when I get the confirmation, once it shoots above the triangle, maybe I get in and hold for the next for the next seven to eight months, which is the way that I do it. But it's going to be very much a function of your own personality. If I attempted, for example, to do what my colleague Varvara does, I probably fail. If she tried to do what I do, I doubt that she would be, be very successful either because it's very much of a function of what you can stomach, very much a function of what it works with the way your personality works. Now, in terms of qualifying an entry point, obviously will be two elements here, the fundamental and the technical element. Now, in terms of the fundamentals, you begin with the overall picture. Say you expect US economic growth to pick up over the next five to six months. Then you hone in on an event trigger saying, we have an interest rate decision coming up from Federal Reserve. So you might say, okay, the overall picture is US economic growth is getting stronger. 
the employment market is getting better, your even trigger will be that rate decision. And if the Fed comes out and introduces another round of raising rates or not, if they do, you buy. If they don't, you don't. Maybe you sell. But essentially, what you are doing is, you say here, this is the overall theme, and here is the inflection point in that theme to either go this way or that way. And you use that as a trigger to initiate a trade. Now, as far as technical analysis, very similar approach. You establish your key technical levels overall, and then you look for price to break or bounce, and that's going to determine what your trade might be triggered at, because to use the same example, if you're looking at buying or selling the US dollar based on what the Federal Reserve says on that particular policy meeting, you might be looking at the level in Euro dollar and say, okay, if it breaks that, that level and the Fed says this, I'm a buyer. If it breaks this level and the Fed says that, I'm a seller. And what we will do, we will go through an example of a trade that I'm currently holding, uh, which, uh, which is a short Aussie position, and we start with qualifying the fundamentals first. The, char the chart on the left is the business confidence, and the other one is the manufacturing PMI, both for Australia. Both of them are leading indicators. Now, let me walk you through the first fundamental sign. As you can see, during 2011 and 2013, the business confidence and the manufacturing PMI were both moving lower. After 2014, both of them peaked some momentum but failed to move above the previous highs. You can clearly see that both remain in that particular range. So that tells us that perhaps the economic outlook for the Australian is starting to deteriorate. Now, why is that? Obviously, investors are very concerned about China. They are very concerned about the stability in the region. They concern about the global growth, perhaps the global slowdown, the plunge in oil prices, which all of them will not help the business investors' confidence. And if you are not confident in that, in, in the overall stability of the economy, maybe you are not confident about the stability of your investment. And then maybe you are not confident in making a purchase or expanding your business. And perhaps not confident by producing more as a business. Now, the second sign, iron ore. Everybody knows that the Australian economy relies heavily on iron ore. The top export destination of Australia is, of course, China, which receives more than one-third of Australia's total exports. Now, following the Chinese currency devaluation and the stock crisis that drove the business sentiment lower, the Chinese companies are likely to decrease the massive imports, which in turn will hurt the Australian economy. Keep in mind that Australia's mining boom has helped its economy to notch up near 20 years of continuous growth. Now, despite the weaker demand in iron ore, the major miners continue to expand production, which of course is not good since the iron ore is cheaper. Take oil, for example. The price of oil is falling over the last two years. It plunged more than $80, and at the same time, the oil producers were increasing the production. This is insane. Therefore, a sustained drop in the price of iron ore will have negative effects on the earnings of these mining companies, which is not good for the Australian market. It is significant that the iron ore, which accounts for almost one-third of the Australian exports, depreciated over 50% of its value during 2011 and 2013, as well as 80% over the last three years. Therefore, all of the above reasons, and since the iron ore predictions show that 
this commodity will remain under pressure for the next couple of years or more, will strongly impact the Australian economy. And finally, the third sign that came from the Reserve Bank of Australia, the multi-rate cuts by the bank the last few years to prevent low inflation and to face the weak growth. The bank reduced the cash rate from 4.75% to 2% the last four years. Meanwhile, if you are up to date with the news, the RPA left the door open for further rate cuts, particularly given the low level of inflation, which could add a further pressure to the Australian dollar. And so, with the above in mind, I look at this entire picture and the overall landscape makes me feel I want to be, or remain in our case, an Aussie seller. Now, moving to qualifying the technicals. Since I have decided now that the overall picture doesn't look good and I want to be an Aussie seller, now my next question is, where do I want to sell it? What, specific, what specifically is the price? And so, I will look something like this, which uh, is a weekly chart of AUD USD. And that right, that right triangle you see, which I have highlighted, that's a technical pattern and it's called a symmetrical triangle. And as you can see, the price action started to contract and you see downside pressure, which is telling the bulls have increasing trouble holding the price near the upper boundary of that particular triangle. And so, I look this setup and I say, okay, so my big picture idea is that Aussie is going down. The technicals seem to support that idea. In that case, as I was waiting for a clear break to the downside and therefore I marked the 0 0.9550, 0 0.9650 area, which is below the triangle as my trigger point. So I was, I was waiting for a daily confirmation below that zone to confirm the bearish bias as well as a second confirmation from the moving averages across to enter the market short. Finally, looking at the current chart, we can see that the break came in mid 2013. Following the break below that zone, the price made two pullbacks afterwards, but both attempts failed. So my trading setup was still in was still valid. Therefore, before you place the trade, you've sort of figured out where you want to get in. You sort of figure out which direction you want to go, but once that trade is on, when do you get out? What happens if your analysis is wrong? How do you minimize losses? How do you make sure that the times you are wrong are minimal in terms of what they cost you? How much will it cost you to put this trade on? not just in terms of what you could make or lose, but in terms of margin, in terms of spread, in terms of positive, positive or negative rollover on holding this particular asset. And so, when I look at the same setup and I look at that bare symmetrical pattern, and I say to myself, okay, I will sell the next level of support which is below that significant zone around 0.95. Now, if that scenario is correct and we do not face a false break, price should go down. If price goes up and breaks above the lower boundary of that triangle or the ascending trend line, then we could say that my trading idea was invalidated and if my trigger is that signal, if the signal is not valid, I want to be out and so what I do is I place my stop right there, right above these obstacles which are seem quite strong. We do not place our stop right above a significant zone or a level since most of the times the price will come back to test that breakout area. 
as I said, if price goes up and closes above that obstacles, which are the 200 SMA, the parity level, and the lower boundary of the triangle, the pattern is not valid, and so I want to be out. My trading idea was invalidated. The important here is that I'm not looking at the particular pip distance from where I got in, I'm looking at where would price have to go for me to be proven wrong. And then I'm look at the distance between that and my likely target, which is, since, since I'm short in this case, uh, a reasonable place where price might find a sticky point on the downside. And I say, does this make sense? Does the distance from my place where I'm getting in and the stop is that too much risk compared to the distance from where I'm getting in and my first target? Is my risk in line with my reward? Is that reward worth risking that much or not? In a situation like this, I will say, okay, well, there might be an intermediate point in uh, 0.72 and my ultimate target is that bottom in our case at 0.60 and I count out these risk to reward ratios and I make a decision. As I mentioned before, you want to set a realistic time frame. In this case, since I'm trading off a weekly chart and sometimes I switch to a monthly to pull out some more significant levels, I'm comfortable with this playing out over several weeks or months. And most of the times, if the setup looks good, I will stay for a couple of years. In fact, I took that exact position two years ago and I still have it now. Although it surpassed the target at this point, I will be revising my stop down to lock some gains, but above all, as I mentioned, one of the greatest advantages of having a systematic approach and a strategy is to know when not to trade and to know when you are wrong. The earlier you know you are wrong, the earlier you get out. And the earlier you get out, the smaller your losses. Okay? And then money management, which I think is by far the most important aspect of trading successfully. I will give you an example of money management, money management using uh, in action from my own trading. In 2015, because I'm a long-term trader, and more specifically a trend trader or a trend follower, I placed a grand total of 26 trades. 23 of them were losers. Three of them were winners. My net gain for the year was around 20%. And here, you may ask, okay, how is that possible? And this is an entire function of money management, because I stick to very strict money management rules. And I will not take a trade where the risk is not at least the half the reward, at least. Or put it in another way, the reward is not at least twice the risk or the target is not at least twice the distance from the place I get in than the stop, at least. And so my losers are very small contacting with my winners and those three trades easily overwhelm the losers and so you will you always want to think of this not as an ego thing not as a gamble but as a business you need to see the bottom line are you up for the year or are you down for the year are you making money or are you losing money at the end of the day, whether you are right or wrong is not important. Whether a given trade stops out or hits its limit is not important. The important thing is, did you make money overall or did you not? Because that's why we are all here, right? We are here to make money. Why else you might trade? And so it's very important not to get hung up on this trade out and this didn't. If I, if I have done it that way and so on. That's not the big important thing here. As I said, hitting a stop is one of the things that should already include in your plans because it's better to lose little than a lot or everything, which happens to a lot of new traders. 
equally important is position sizing. If you're gonna trade like me and be a long-term trader, which in my case, I do not use much leverage at all, maybe two to one or three to one. A more active trader is trying to make more of a shorter oscillations, maybe use more, but then tighter stops. And so it's very, very important to look at all of these elements and say, at the end of the day, what is my risk? And obviously position size is going to be a part of that because 20 pips with a 10k load and 20 pips with a 200k load in dollar terms are very different losses and very different gains. Finally, it is very important to realize that one strategy will not fit in every market condition. When the thing you are looking is trending and you apply a range bound strategy, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. The same thing in reverse. If the market is in a range bound, in a range bound, attempting to trade it as if it's trending, probably you fail. And so to be a successful trader, because markets will change conditions, is to have a range of strategies and to be able to say, okay, when it's a range bound, I will do this. And when it's trending, I will do that. And try to keep it simple as much as possible. Now, we have sort of covered my strategy, but if we focus exactly on what I look at, I begin with that big picture. I begin with where I think the overall market, the overall fundamental is going for the next six to eight months or so. And as I showed to you before, I then use technicals once I have established where I wanna buy or where I wanna sell to actually figure out at what price at what time, with what stop, and with what target. And because longer term fundamentals can take months and sometimes a year to play out, I'm comfortable holding it. If I was right about nailing a 12 month trend, there is really no reason of getting out after a week's time. I just hold it. And if it hits my initial objective and keeps moving, I will move my stop down, locking some profits, maybe add to the position after examining my current scenario and just keep holding it. As long as it works, there's no reason not to continue doing what works, right? And finally, because I'm a position trader, I never at any time exceed more than 10 to 1 leverage. Now that doesn't mean that I raise my margin requirement, so my 50 to 1 margin requirement doesn't go anywhere. But what I mean here is the total amount of exposure that I have is never more than 10 times the actual balance I have in my account. So if I'm going to sell a 20K lot of Aussie, I will always have at least at the absolute minimum 2K in my account. Now as a practical matter, I will never ramp up my leverage to 10 to 1 right away. What I usually do, I will start with something extremely low, 1 to 1 or 2 to 1. And as the position begins to develop over several months, if I see opportunities to add, I will add. And of course that will increase the amount of leverage and I will start to scale in. But first, I want to see the momentum behind my idea, the momentum that I was looking for to actually develop. Now, let's, um, it's very important to have a trading strategy before you enter the market. Because trading is like war. You are battling some very smart, experienced and very well capitalized opponents. To be successful in trading, you need to have an edge. And the first thing you should do is to build your defense before you attack. Without a strategy, without a system, without a plan, I would ensure that you will make just some noise before defeat. Certainly, this can be a tough task when money is involved.
but it can be accomplished by establishing and focusing on these set plans and rules of action. Make sure you don't miss out any of the upcoming webinars where you can find a full calendar on JFD Brokers page under my JFD tab. Uh, in the next webinar, I will talk about intermarket analysis. Basically, we're going to learn the different relationships between asset classes, both in an in an inflationary and a deflationary environment. Then I will cover as well business cycles. Uh, now on a different webinar with titled Trading Psychology, I'll talk I will talk about how to eliminate emotions from trading. And then in another webinar we're gonna go through trend following uh, this uh, unique trading technique which I follow for years now. Thank you everybody for joining me. Please feel free to email me through my personal email which you can see on the screen. Uh, we'd be more than happy to hear any webinar ideas you may have. I'm Efthibolos Rigorio here at GFD Brokers. Thank you guys and good luck with your trades. And always remember, amateurs want to be right. Professionals want to make money. Therefore, make sure that before you begin trading or before you go to the battle, it's a wise to have a trading strategy in place.